Hey, how's it going? Alex here from Ideaspot, and in today's WordPress tutorial, you're going to learn how to set up the Securi Security Plugin. For this Securi Security Plugin tutorial, we are going to be using just a blank, fresh install of WordPress, and we're going to install Securi from scratch and just do it all step by step. So first step is we go into our dashboard, plugins, add new. When you search for security, you'll notice that these are your most popular security plugins. So obviously you've got WordFence is the most popular. And then right behind that, you've got these couple of plugins here and iThemes as well. So security, very popular, 600,000 installations at the moment. Let's go ahead and install that one. Okay, and let's activate that. After you've activated, you'll notice you'll get your security security plugin in your list of installed plugins. You'll also get this security um, option on your WordPress dashboard menu. So let's go ahead and click that one. So the first time you load this page up, it'll take a minute and it will scan your website. And with any luck, you'll get your site is clean. This is just a fresh install. So everything looks all good. No malicious JavaScript or any nasties on here, not blacklisted. There are some security recommendations that we'll touch on later to make your WordPress install a bit harder to um, penetrate. So let's work on that later. Um, it did pick up a little thing indexed to HTML saying the core WordPress files were modified. Depending on how your website was set up, it might pick up some things like that, depending on plugins or things you're using. In this case, index to was just a little um, your account is ready page that the host provided when I installed the, um, the website on here. So that's fine. If you pick up any little false positives like that one, you just flag it and say, um, I understand this is fine and mark it as fixed and click submit there. But from here, we're more or less good to go. All your WordPress files are correct now. It says the site is clean and Securi will automatically scan your WordPress files periodically. So, and it does that remotely. So it doesn't use any resources from your web hosting, which is really nice, especially in a free version. So briefly, we can quickly have a look at the settings here and see what we get in this free version. First thing we'll look at here is under settings and scanner. You'll see that this scanner is scheduled. Some parts of the site are scheduled to scan hourly, some twice daily, some daily. Um, all depends on the priority there. If you feel like doing a scan at any time, you can just click and highlight them all and then click submit and it will execute a scan. If you're feeling like you need a scan just because you've installed something new or you just want to test something, um, that's how you do that. The next thing we can look at is hardening. Um, there are some additional options you can add on here, but by default, it works just fine. Um, Firewall protection, you don't get that in the free version anyway, so um, you can't turn that on in the free version. Um, these are already turned on. And you can test some of these, but I've found that some plugins actually need access to these um, directories. So um, you will you can read the option um, in here and see. Uh, it'll say that many plugins and themes which rely on the ability to execute PHP. So especially um, some backup plugins, particularly need to be able to execute. So um, you can use whitelist tools to um, get around that, but I think it's just easier to leave it as default. The one thing we can turn on without any risk really is this information leakage. That just blocks the access to the readme file where people can get information about your software from the readme file. Um, yeah, it doesn't do a lot, but turning it on doesn't hurt. You can also turn off the plugin and theme editor just because you're not gonna be editing your plugins and themes constantly. And uh, one way you can get uh, injected with malware is, is, is if this editor is enabled. So we can apply hardening to that as well. The final one with the secret keys updater, if you've had some sort of issue and you want to just reset everyone's account, um, you can just apply that. It'll make uh, everyone log back into their WordPress accounts and generate new cookies for everyone. Um, it's just, if you feel like uh, someone's left their computer logged on and they can't get back to their computer and you're worried about um, leaving people logged in. So um, that's just for emergencies. You don't need to use that in most cases. And finally, like we talked about before earlier, you can whitelist certain blocked PHP files. So if you wanted to block all these PHP files with this hardening, then you might run into trouble with some of your maybe um, backup or caching plugins having some issues. So you could whitelist those particular plugins while still blocking everything else from being able to be executed. So um, I'm not going to get into that here, but if you're interested in that, you can go ahead and um, add your certain backup 
plugin PHP file to here. Um, all you have to do is put the um, file path in there and then submit. But it's just fine leaving those off for now. So in our next step, let's have a look at alerts because security likes to send heaps of alerts. So to your um, admin email. So uh, you can change the format of what the actual subject looks like. Uh, the default one is fine. Maximum alerts per hour. You could just say unlimited alerts per hour or five per hour, I think is fine. Um, there are alerts for all these different events. Most of these you don't really need an alert for. So let's just go ahead and um, turn some of these alerts off. So the one you get most email alerts from is the post status. Every time you're working on your blog, uh, you'll get a security alert uh, just because you changed a draft or published a post. You could go ahead and turn that off. Uh, you could, anytime you change settings or modify anything with a the theme or plugin, you could turn those off. The other thing you could do is just leave them on and set up a dedicated email address. So change the email that it sends to and just add a new email on there. So let's just delete the admin email from there. And then we could go ahead and just add a new email on there. So we just put like a new um, security, new security at idea spot space and just put a new email address, set up an email address specifically for all these alerts to go to. And then you can just check them periodically rather than having them mixed up with all your important emails. You know, the other thing you could do is just use an email filter and filter them into a specific folder in your email. So a couple of ways to deal with it, but it does generate a lot of email. So just be aware of that. Now, the last thing we can look at here, and this is optional, is generating an API key. Now, this API key will help your WordPress site link to Security, and Security will help store your log files for you. And so if you did get the disaster of getting hacked or getting malware and you want to recover, Security can help you recover from the hack. And that is done through their premium service, but you can get the API key in the free version. And then if you ever need it in the future, uh, they've got all your logs and they can support you straight away. So you'll get full value straight away if you ever needed to buy that pre um, premium version. So let's try this out. Let's click generate API key and it'll say, okay, WebSpot Website is at ideaspot.space. Email is ideaspot.class. And I agree and understand and click submit. So if that all works perfectly, then you'll get a success message and you'll get your API key sitting here. So that will be all set up. So that's all looking good to go. So at this point, we're pretty much done setting the plugin up. We can go back to our dashboard and let's look at some of these recommendations in terms of hardening our WordPress install a bit more. Let's cover these one by one. So security header XSS protection missing. You can just click on that and it'll load up a little article about how you address this particular issue. So this one is done by editing the HT access file and adding this line to it. So let's just copy that line and get one of your favorite uh, text editors, notepad or whatever, and just paste that in there. And let's use that later. Let's head back to our dashboard and look at the next one. Security header X content type options no sniff so let's look at that same thing we just need to add a little bit of config to our HD access header so let's copy that and pop that in here and let's go back to our dashboard the last one is strict transport security this is, depends on your hosting and your SSL certificate so I'm going to cover that one in a second I'm using Cloudflare for my SSL so um, this is fairly simple to address but I'll do that in a minute let's do these two first and edit that HT access file so for this, we don't actually use the WordPress dashboard. We'll need to go to our hosting control panel and you'll need to find your file manager or you can FTP or secure FTP into your files. But in this case, I'm just using Infinity Free for the free website for this demonstration. And the file manager is just there. Um, your hosting will be a little bit different or, um, but you just need to find your file manager and find where WordPress is installed. And you'll know because there'll be WP content, WP admin, and there'll be one called HD access. So let's go ahead and click that and click edit. This is where we just need to add those couple lines of configuration to the HT access file. So let's just grab those lines that we copied earlier, paste them in there. I'm going to add a little comment in there and just say it was a um, security uh, recommendation. And just so I remember why those lines are there, if you ever go and look in there in the future and then click save. 
And with any luck, those messages should be addressed by now. So back on our dashboard, let's reload the page. It still thinks that we're missing those headers, even though that we changed them. And it can take up to 20 minutes for it to actually uh, reload that, uh, that check. So you can either be patient or if you want to be impatient, uh, we can go and do this manually. Under your settings and general settings, just scroll down to the data storage here until you find that one called security site check. You can click that and then click delete. And then when you go back to your dashboard, you can just click reload again. It'll regenerate the scan. And then hopefully that message has disappeared, which it has. So um, those headers have been set up properly. You don't need to do that. You can just wait 20 minutes and those messages should disappear by themselves when it reloads. But that's just a way of speeding it up. Let's have a look at fixing up this security header strict transport security. In many cases, you won't even get this header security strict transport security message, but if you do, you can enable it through your um, SSL management in your web hosting control panel. But um, if you're using Cloudflare like I'm using, then I'll show you how to do that right now. So I'm in the Cloudflare dashboard and I'm under SSL and I'm looking at the edge certificates. And if we scroll down, you'll find the strict transport security there. You click enable, and then you've got to click I understand and go to next. And now you have to configure it. The max age, I think we want to set it to the recommended six months. And that's pretty much all we need to do. We need to click that to enable it. And you just have to be careful here to make sure you've always got your SSL working during that. Otherwise you could get locked out for six months. So just be careful about that. So let's go ahead and click save. Now, as we scroll down, we can see in our dashboard for security, those uh, recommendations have all disappeared now. There's just a few general WordPress security recommendations here that you shouldn't always be using the admin. If you're just editing posts, just create an editor account and use that instead of using admin all the time. Um, any unwanted themes or plugins, you should disable them um, and maybe actually delete them if you're not using them. So let's go ahead and do that. We can see our site's got a Kismet anti-spam installed, but it's not activated. So let's just go ahead and delete it. I don't really intend to use the um, anti-spam on this website. And then same with the themes. We've got 2020 active, but these old themes are still on here as well. So let's just go ahead and delete uh, these 2019. And let's go ahead and delete the other ones as well. I'll just skip ahead and do that. So that's wiped out any themes or plugins that we're not actually using. Let's go back to our security uh, dashboard. Again, it can take time for these things to update. In this case, it looks like uh, these things have already updated. So it's just saying, don't you always use the admin and we can harden the content and WP includes directories if we want to. Um, again, that's, that's pretty optional, but we can do that through the settings here. I might just go ahead and do that for the sake of this demonstration. So that is under hardening and we can do um, apply hardening to the content and apply hardening to the WP includes directory. Um, on this website, because there's not many plugins operating, I don't imagine it's going to cause any dramas for us. But like I said earlier, if you're running a backup or some caching plugins, you might uh, get some errors, but this looks like it's going just fine. So let's head back and let's go back to our dashboard. And now the only uh, recommendation I've got is not to always use the admin, which I'm using an admin now, but you could easily use an editor and you wouldn't get any of these recommendations popping up. Let's just cover that off just for the sake of completeness. Go to users. I'm going to add a new user and let's just add a, uh, let's add an editor on here. So I'm just going to call it, um, um, edit guy. Um, I'll make that idea spot class Gmail. I'll make it our idea spot class editor. And then that should all be cool. Let's just make up a strong password. There we go. And let's add the new user. I might just save that password and let's go back to the dashboard of security. So, all right, we can scroll down. We can see security recommendations. Your WordPress install is following the security best practices. So quest completed guys. We've um, 
done all the security measures that are recommended for our website. We've got our malware scanner working. The only thing we don't get in the free version is this firewall. That's that's an important thing to have on a WordPress website. You can get the firewall for free by using WordFence or by using one called, I think it's called Ninja Firewall. I haven't tested that yet, but that might be something for a future video. Um, otherwise, you could just sign up and get uh, the security firewall. I think the prices start from $200 a year. So they're under pricing. Yeah, you can get the basic one for $200 a year and it scans every 12 hours and you can get uh, your malware and removed and cleaned up is included in that. So that's pretty cool. You can submit um, support tickets and let security handle any problems that you've had. So uh, you don't need to buy that straight away. Like if you run into problems in the future and you need help cleaning up your website, then go ahead and join. If you've set up that API key like we did earlier in the video, they'll have all your details and they'll be able to help you. So that might be a good way of um, doing it without actually having to pay for it straight away. So anyway, let's sort of wrap this up. Thumbs up if this has been helpful. I'm just gonna go over the pros and cons. Obviously the free version is free so that's a great pro um, it's got a good malware scanner and there's no performance issues uh, with this plugin because everything's done remotely the security servers handle all your scanning and you don't have to scan the website using your own server so it doesn't slow your website down like some other security plugins do notably i think WordFence is one where um it scans regularly and it does use up a bit of your processor on your uh, website. So that's a good advantage. There is a bit of a disadvantage with that as well because it only can access the files that it can access um, remotely. So it won't get access to your full website, but um, it'll be enough to pick up most common um, intrusions. So the major con is there's no firewall in the free version. Like I said before, you'd have to sign up to get that firewall um, with the basic plan at least. So... Um, you'd have to go and use something like WordFence or Ninja Firewall, but these firewalls are run on your server rather than remotely. So um, again, rather than paying with money, you're paying with um, some performance issues that might slow your website down. But honestly, I've tried WordFence for a while and uh, the performance on my website hasn't really been affected too badly. So just try WordFence out if you really want that free firewall and don't mind a little bit of extra um, usage on your web server. And I just wanted to note that uh, Security was a really cool way of introducing me to some um, header security and also that uh, strict transport header as well. Um, that was something I wasn't like fully aware about because I'm not a cybersecurity expert, but I'm just a dumb engineer who was able to uh, learn by going through those security recommendations. So I thought, even if you don't end up using security, those um, security steps that harden the headers, improve the SSL, those little steps were good anyway. And even if you don't use a plugin, you can still implement those um, security measures and get a good result for your website. So um, hopefully this has been really useful uh, for me. I liked it, um, even though I don't want to use the free version because I'd like the free firewall and some of these other options, but still a great plugin. Um, thumbs up if it's been helpful. Subscribe because I'm going to come back with some more good WordPress tutorials next week. And thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.